Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast Special Edition Series. This time it's going to be the Conference USA in terms of the conference predictions for the 2019-20 college basketball season. Without further ado, here we go. You know the drill. Projected order of finish, player of the year, frosh of the year, coach of the year, then some random little predictions along the way. In first place, I have the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, led by Charlie Bassey and Tavion Hollingsworth. Rick Stansberry in year four. Last year, disappointing 20-14, and 11-7 and seven in conference play. In second place, I have the UTSA Roadrunners, 17-15 um, and 15 last year, 11-7 in Conference USA. Steve Hansen, third year, or I'm sorry, fourth year on the job. And I think his team will be improved, led by Javon Jackson, Keaton Wallace, and Jacob Germany. Third place, I have the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, Eric Conkle in year five, 20 and 13 last year, 9 and 9 in conference play. Daquan Bracey is their best player. In fourth place, I have the UTEP Miners, who I think will make a mega jump from 8 and 21 a year ago, 3 and 15 in conference play. Rodney Terry in year two on the job. Bryson Williams and Effie Ogde will really uh, help this team going forward. In fifth place, I have the Old Dominion Monarchs, who actually won the auto bid last year. Um, Jeff Jones in year seven on the job. Um, returning player, including um, Xavier Green. In sixth place, I have the UAB Blazers, 20 and 15 a year ago, 10 and 8 in conference play. They made the CBI. Robert Eshon in year three on the job. Um, among notable players returning, um, Zach Bryant. In seventh place, I have the North Texas Mean Green, 21 and 12 last year, 8 and 10 in conference play. This team actually started off 16 and 1 last year, and it absolutely fell apart in conference play. Um, their coach is Grant McSalen, who's in year number three. In eighth place, I have the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Nick Medevitt in year number two after replacing Kermit Davis, 11 and 21. Last year, 8 and 10 in conference play. Um, their best player returning is Antonio Green. In ninth place, I have the Marshall Thundering Herd. Um, they have Dan D'Antoni back for a sixth year. Um, and notable player back, um, Tavion Kinsey. And this team made the CIT last year and won it all. In tenth place, I have the Charlotte 49ers, Ron Sanchez, year two, 8 and 21 last year, 5 and 13 in conference play. 11th place, I have the Florida Atlantic Owls, who went 17-16 and 16 last year. 8-10 um, in conference play, Dusty May in year two, CIT last year. Noble player coming back, Jalen Ingram. In 12th place, I have the Florida International Panthers, Jeremy Ballard in year two. Had a good year last year, 20-14, and 10-8 and in conference play, made the CIT second round. Um, Devin Andrews is their best returning player. In 13th place, I have the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, made the CBI last year. 20-13, and 11-7 in CUSA play, but they're going to take a big step back. They lost a lot of key players. Um, Doc Sadler is now an assistant coach in Nebraska, so Southern Miss also has a new head coach. Um, and in the cellar, I have the Rice Owls, who went 13-19 and last year, 8-10 and in conference by Scott Pera in year number three. So we'll see if Rice outdoes my prediction and avoids the cellar. And some people actually think that Southern Miss will actually finish in last, but I just don't see it happening. Southern Miss was a good team last year, so I don't think they'll take that major of a step back into the deep end of the cellar. Player of the year, um, Charlie Bassey. Um, solid player. Um, 
very talented player. Big guy from Western Kentucky. Highly rated player. Um, freshman of the year, Jacob Germany. Highly tied a big man from UTSA. And the coach there, I have Rick Stansbury from Western Kentucky, who I think will end up with the auto bid in that conference. I think that UTSA and La Tech will be potentially NIT teams. UTEP, Old Dominion, UAB, maybe CBI or CIT, potentially, within those three teams. Um, in terms of predictions, I think that the most likely coach to jump, other than Sansbury, could very well be Jeff Jones from Old Dominion, who really has um, gotten his teams to overachieve a little bit. I think with a potentially good year, um, Rodney Terry could jump. Although I think that seems like a little bit of a long shot. And um, Steve Henson, even though this is only his fourth year with the Roadrunners, that's somebody else I think could potentially jump ship to another job. And in terms of coaches on the hot seat, I think Dandy and Tony's under some pressure this year. I think that um, another guy that could potentially be under pressure to um, potentially lose his job if things don't go so smoothly is Eric Conkle. Louisiana Tech's a good program, so I don't expect him to lose his job, but I think if it could potentially downfall, then that could be a dark horse guy to get fired. Um, all right, so next up is the Horizon League.